I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today we're down in the Victorian high country to drive the updated 2019 Hyundai Tucson. The Tucson is actually one of our favorite vehicles in the medium SUV segment because it looks really good, it drives really well, it's affordable, it's a good all-round family vehicle. So some changes for the 2019 model year are really just designed to keep the vehicle in that position in our high esteem. So we'll be looking today at whether these little nips and tucks to the design outside and in and some alterations to the way the Tucson drives have made this an even better choice in the midsize SUV segment. Well, you can see the car behind me. This is a Highlander, the nicest spec that you can get in the Tucson, but the design changes are pretty common to the whole range. You can see that the front end and also the back end have been massaged a little bit. I think it lifts the design, makes it look a little bit more refined, handsome and expensive. But some of the biggest changes are inside the car, plus they've also tightened up the way this thing gets down a back road really nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look in front, in back, and then we'll take the 2019 Tucson for a drive. It was here in the cabin that the outgoing Tucson version probably needed the most help. Not because the Hyundai was by any stretch a bad car to sit in, but just because the rivals have kind of come up out of nowhere, cars like the new CX-5, the new Tiguan, etc., have just had a nicer cabin. Thankfully, Hyundai have now fixed that situation with the 2019 Tucson, which has a really nicely lifted interior that is a more refined, more premium space to spend your time. That starts with the material quality, which has taken a marked step up. Every grade gets this really nice wrapped and stitched piece along the dashboard, which you spend quite a bit of time looking at, and it looks great. Plus, there are lots of nice soft surfaces up here on the doors, nice creamy leather steering wheel, and this is a nice soft piece down where you rest your arm. It definitely feels lifted in here. Plus, the technology gets an upgrade. Only the base model has a 7-inch screen anymore. Everything else gets this larger, really crisp 8-inch version, which has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, integrated navigation, and DAB digital radio. So really, everything that you could want. The seats are unchanged, but they're really comfortable. The ActiveX Elite and Highlander all get leather uh, in a choice of black or this beige, which I think makes the cabin a bit lighter and nicer. The driving position is quite high. If you're looking for an SUV that makes you feel like you are sitting well and truly above the traffic, the Tucson's good for that. But the seats give you lots of support, including lumbar adjustment for the back. I've just done two hours non-stop and no issues to speak of. Practicality is not bad either. The Highlander is the sole model to get a wireless phone charger. It'd be good to see that further down the range as well. However, there are two medium-sized cup holders, a little uh, pocket change holder, and a decent size bin between the seats. The back seat of the Tucson starts well with doors that open nice and wide and a high roof line, so you won't bang your head fitting a child seat. The only issue with that is that the hidden Isofix points would be better if they were exposed, like in something like a Volkswagen Tiguan. Shut that door, however, and you get a nice reassuring thunk. And you'll find that the good news continues because the back seat here in the Tucson is actually very comfortable. The bench is inclined a bit higher, so it does support your legs. It's made of plush materials and the room is good. So for me, it's six foot. I've got about an inch of extra headroom. That's because of this large panoramic roof that looks fantastic. But if you've got really tall teenagers, you might have to consider the car without the glass roof. Leg room, got heaps of it sitting behind myself. My toes have plenty of room to move as well. The higher grades get air vents back here. There is now a USB port here in the back seat, bringing the total for the Tucson to two. But some cars in the segment, like the CX-5, have four ports. But you do get this pull-down armrest here with two cup holders, always nice to see. And as a final touch, you get a little bit of extra recline out of this backrest in the Tucson to help people here in the back not off on a long journey. Instead of having a kick to open easy tailgate like most vehicles in this segment, all you have to do is stand behind the Tucson and the tailgate comes right up on models equipped with the power tailgates. That's really nice and easy, isn't it? Once it's up, you'll find there's good room. 488 litres of space to be exact, which does trail the roomiest vehicles in this segment. It puts the Hyundai about the middle of the pack. But it's a good square space. You could easily stack this with suitcases or boxes. And it's got a couple of special features. So you'll find that there are a couple of hooks on each side close to the opening. 
Underneath you'll find a spare wheel rather than underfloor storage. And there's also a retractable cargo cover that's got a bit of weight to it and a 12 volt socket back here. So what's the revised Tucson like to drive? Well, it won't surprise you that it's pretty familiar and pretty similar to the pre-facelift version of this car. But as Hyundai usually does with midlife updates, they've just tidied up aspects of the dynamics here and there that I think add up to make the 2019 Tucson a better all-round car to drive both every day and out here on some really good roads. So I'll touch on those changes first because a lot of things do remain the same. What they've focused on is the steering and the suspension and it was designed to make the Tucson feel a little bit more plush and a little bit more comfortable for the daily grind. That's what Hyundai tell us and I do think that's actually worked pretty well. There's been some small but meaningful revisions to components in the suspension that just round off edges a little bit better than the outgoing version of the Tucson. The spring rates have remained effectively unchanged apart from in the uh, four cylinder naturally aspirated petrol. So there's just been little adjustments here and there to angles, to the anti-roll bars, to the struts, just little things to make the Tucson a bit softer, a bit plusher, and that all adds up to a more refined and a little bit more of a cohesive experience. The other thing they've done is they've reduced the steering ratio in the Tucson so it turns in with more vigor. It requires less turns lock to lock to rotate this thing and it definitely makes the Tucson feel a little bit more fun and a little bit more sporty. About the only thing that hasn't benefited from these changes is that the smooth road ride in the Tucson is just a little bit unsettled. However, in every other circumstance, the Tucson rides impeccably well. This vehicle deals with big bumps and big hits unlike any other medium SUV. I actually think that as an all-rounder, the Tucson is the best riding vehicle in its segment, beating even the Tiguan, especially when you factor in the kind of big potholes and big imperfections that you get on Australian back roads. I've hit a lot of them today and the Tucson recovers really well. It's a very good effort. Otherwise, the Tucson's driving experience is pretty familiar. The three engines carry over from the 2018 version of this car, starting with a two litre naturally aspirated four cylinder petrol, which makes 122 kilowatts of power and 205 newton meters of torque. Now, this is a popular engine and it does get the job done, but what you'll find is that it really needs to be revved pretty hard to get the best out of it. And as a result, the two litre GDI petrol is pretty noisy and a little bit unrefined, plus it likes a drink. I'd recommend splashing out on either the turbocharged petrol or the turbo diesel. Now, the turbo petrol, it's a 1.6 litre, but it makes 130 kilowatts and 265 newton meters. And it's actually quite a nice little performer. It's refined and it comes with a seven speed dual clutch automatic that I think is better than Volkswagen's DSG. But the two litre turbo diesel is probably the way to go if you're looking for a real all rounder experience with the Tucson has 136 kilowatts of power and 400 newton meters from its two liter engine and it just gets the job done really nicely it's really muscular in the low end of the revs you really don't hear it working it's frugal i think this is the best suited engine to the tucson plus both of these turbo engines come with hyundai's new h track all-wheel drive system as standard and this is a really nice uh, all poor system. You can feel it working and directing torque to the rear wheels quite enthusiastically. I didn't feel that as much with the outgoing all wheel drive system on the 2018 Tucson. It has lots of grip in really uh, loose surfaces. We've done plenty of gravel driving today with the Tucson as you'll see here and the H-Track system works really nicely. Plus, the unique stability control tuning for Australia means that the Tucson will give you a little bit of slip before pulling you back in and all of that adds up with the new steering ratio to make the Tucson a really fun, nice car to drive on a back road. It's actually a pleasure to string together corners in the 2019 Tucson, and that's not something you can say of many vehicles in this class. I think the Tucson is up there with the Volkswagen Tiguan and the Skoda Kodiak as being among the best cars to drive in this segment, and that's definitely high praise for a vehicle that is, you know, at its midlife point now. One thing they've also done is they've introduced a better standard of safety into the Tucson. It is really disappointing that autonomous emergency braking is not a standard. 
The Elite and Highlander include a safety sense package which has AEB, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and auto high beam uh, and that's the optional package on the lower down variants for $2,200. It's something I really recommend taking because this is a family car through and through. Things like AEB uh, and lane keep assist are increasingly life saving technologies that you don't want to go without. So those are my impressions of the lightly revised 2019 Hyundai Tucson. Better to look at, better to sit in and better to drive, this is a textbook midlife upgrade. We already like the Tucson, but a few meaningful changes have elevated the whole, keeping this SUV competitive with newer options in the segment like Volkswagen's Tiguan and the Mazda CX-5. My advice is to give the basic GDI petrol a miss, and instead aim for a higher spec 1.6 turbo or diesel model with all the safety kit. Do that and you've got yourself a stylish, well-rounded family car.